What's good guys, Cool200 here, late at night, with another video. We are here with the 2011 1 64 scale die cast. And this one should be a pretty easy review. Um, really not too many cars, just six cars here as you guys can see. So let's just jump right into this here. I'm going to go ahead and scooch up closer, which will help me because my room is a mess right now. And we're just going to start with a banger here, and we're going to start with Xfinity, or I think at this still time it was Nationwide uh, car. This is Tony Stewart's 2011, if I said 10, I'm sorry, 2011 um, number 4 uh, Oreo diecast. Very nice looking, I think he won Daytona in this. So you, oh, wait, oh, Kevin Harvick. Incorporated, I think that was the team back then. No idea. You got Camping World Truck Series and Nationwide Series back when Nationwide was still a thing. You got Tony Stewart, Ritz Oreo 2011 Impala. There's the other side. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and pop this open. Um, this has got to be one of my favorite NASCAR teams of all time at this point. Oh, it's so beautiful. Chevy looks so weird though. Alrighty guys, here's the Chevy before it was a Camaro. Let me go ahead and zoom you in just a little bit there. Uh, there we go. Give you guys the best angle there. So as you would see up here on the front, you have this weird blue fade um, that goes from dark blue to kind of this weird fade right here into light blue. You got Oreo Ritz, um, Impala, there's her face, very weird. Um, you got this dark bluish purple that kind of moves. You got this light blue, some milk, Oreo, Oreo Ritz. Very nice looking. Obviously, you have blue all the way across the top. Back here, you got Oreo and Ritz. You got the Oreo and Ritz cracker. And there's the other side. What's nice about this scheme as well, also something to know here, uh, Nationwide is not outlined in black. I'm not sure if it ever was supposed to be, but... Yeah, I'm kind of used to seeing Xfinity outlined in that black, so yeah. But, uh, look at all that metal flake in this paint, guys. It's just, I love pointing this stuff out because it's just so beautiful, you know. They definitely killed it with this die cast. It looks really nice. And, uh, what more do I need to say about this beautiful die cast? Let me know if you guys have this die cast and remember this Daytona 500. Or it wasn't the Daytona 500. It was like the Daytona 250 or something. Uh, it was the Daytona for the lower series is what I'm going to say. And uh, speaking of Campy World Truck Series or the um, the Gander Outdoors uh, tr uh, Truck Series. They're making 164 scale die cast next year. Hopefully they put some in, uh, in the Authentics. I'm going to pick those bitches up so fast. Oh, those are going to be so nice. Anyways, moving on. We have Denny Hamlin's 2011 diecast. I know Denny Hamlin. The biggest villain right now in NASCAR. Everybody hates him. And now people are jumping on with Kyle Busch because Denny Hamlin's now the most hated driver in NASCAR or something. What is happening, guys? The Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott feud is over. Stop complaining. Okay? If you were in Denny Hamlin's situation, you would have moved Chase Elliott to win the race, too. Except he didn't win the race either, so you know, I can see why you're a little salty there. Because, you know, if he bumped out your favorite driver, he should at least win the race so you guys can hate him even more. Right? <laughs> and then, you guys are blaming Denny Hamlin for wrecking Chase Elliott at Phoenix, even though he got... He, he, what? What's wrong with you? Kurt Busch hit Chase Elliott. I get it, Denny Hamlin ran into Kurt Busch. But are you dumb? Stop hating on Denny Hamlin, okay? It's stupid. Stop it. I, I'm, I'm nice to say it. I still like Chase Elliott, and I still like Denny Hamlin. Now, while the feud was going on with Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin, I was more on Chase Elliott's side. But I enjoyed the feud. The feud is over. Shut up. Anyways, moving on to the die cast. Just had to get that out because I'm tired of Danny Hamlin getting all this nonsense. Um, it's just stupid. Stop. But here it is. Um, 
I do have to say, I love these 2012 bodies, or these 2011 bodies. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I, I love them. Uh, personally, I don't, like I said, I don't know, but I, I do. I love them. Uh, I just like the way they look, I don't know. Anyways, here's the front. Uh, I do kind of miss these FedEx paint schemes. Unfortunately, I don't have it in FedEx office. But, uh, yeah. You got the orange and the white here. Kind of your normal 2010 through 2014, I think. Did he have a die cast? Uh, FedEx die cast. Got the, looks like kind of a sun rays uh, coming off the car here with some purple in it. FedEx Express all the way around the car. It's kind of where this car doesn't sit right. You guys can see that this is more higher than this. Let me know down in the comments if that's if it's supposed to be like that. Because I do have another car from a different um, buyer. This was a Spin Master. And as you see, they got the height right. But uh, obviously, this is a childhood replacement because this car is beat up to, to hell pretty much. And uh, this car looks kind of weird. I don't know. And then back here, you got FedEx Express or FedEx.com, FedEx Express on the back lid. And there's the other side. So yeah, let me know if that car is supposed to be like that. I don't really think it is. I'm not sure what's going on there. Seems a little off. By a long shot. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of seems like one of my Talladega setups. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go ahead and move on to Jimmy Johnson and his Lowe's paint scheme. Uh, you guys have may seen, you guys may have seen this before. I actually have this in two Spin Master cars. I got the Spin Master um, replacement because I had a this Spin Master car and it was beat up to hell. You can see some red, lots of nicks and scratches and bangs and bruises. And I replaced that with the actual Spin Master and then I found Lionel's. And of course, I picked it because Lionel's better. Or, yeah, Lionel is better than Spin Master, so. That's just how I feel. And now I am going to say we need a competitor for Lionel. Um, because Lionel's not doing their job anymore. They're messing up decals, and. At least back here, they were still kind of correct with their decals, but now they've just. they just don't care. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that in this video. I already did that in the 2008 diecast video. Anyways, you got the beautiful Lowe's here with this gray, um, the cobalt gray, I'm going to call it. You got cobalt tools, Lowe's, uh, car quest. I, no, that's not car quest. I'm stupid. That's something else. I love the, I don't, I don't know, like a wrenchy kind of, I don't know what this is. Kind of weird design here. Kind of cool. Um, you got the silver on top, you've got cobalt tools on the decklet and the back, and there's the other side. Um, obviously you can see it has the gorgeous metal flake and the, um, silver paint, so very, very nice. And, uh, yeah, here's the, uh, Spin Master, I'm just gonna get out the banged up one. As you can see, they went with a kind of a flat finish, I'm going to call it, and Lionel went with a metal flake finish, and I will say, I have no idea which one is more accurate, but I like Lionel's a lot better, I think the body looks a lot nicer, um, the front nose is way more sleek around Lionel's, it is more flat um, in real life, this one is way curved, the wheels are fat, um, the body's huge. Um, there's, there's just, look at the spoiler difference. That is sad. It's, it, spin, this is why Spin Master went out. So, yeah. There you go. Uh, you guys can kind of see here. Maybe that, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's how they sit. I don't know. I don't know, it just seemed weird with the Denny Hamlin. I don't know. But anyways, good. Whoa, we're going to drop the car here. going to go ahead and move on with the Dale Earnhardt Jr. Very rare camouflage car. You guys may have seen the 2009 camouflage car and the 2010 diecast review, which was after, uh, before this. Uh, another childhood replacement. 
You can see there's the Spin Master one that I had. Very, very bad. Uh, very beaten and bruised once again. But uh, never fear. I repla The replacement is here. Uh. Crickets. And here it is. The Dale Earnhardt Jr. National Guard camouflage paint scheme. Very, very gorgeous. Um, I actually hated this paint scheme for a long time, not going to lie. But uh, it kind of grew on me. And now that I see it in a lino, on a lino body, it looks that much better. So obviously you got a matte finish here with the black. You got National Guard, uh, some red. Um, kind of peek in here with the camo. You got some black there. Then of course you got your camouflage. You got the black on the roof. You got National Guard, National Guard. Mountain Dew. Got to get that dew on there. Here on the back you got National Guard with the normal Dale Jr. black back. Or black, or black back bumper. You got amp on the deck lid. And there is the other side. So, very beautiful car. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Spin Master, but your car is so wrong. They put so much more red right here. The red is on the splitter, too. Uh, Spin Master, once again, this is why you guys ran out of business or got bought. You didn't run out of business, but you got bought by Lionel because you're trash. I'm glad they're gone, honestly. I, I, I'm not 100% glad they're gone because I think Lionel would still try with their cars if uh, Spin Master was here. But I'm also glad that Spin Master is gone because they were trash. They were just straight trash. Alright. Next guy we're going to review is Bobby Labonte and his 2011 Kingsford 47 car for JTG Doherty Racing. Ah. Uh, one of the last years for Bobby Labonte in his full-time career. 2012 and then 2013 would be it. So, after this he had two more years. And then he went to the 32 for a go green racing at the time. And then, uh, just fully retired in 2015. So, yeah. Or after 2015, but yeah. So here it is. The Kingsford car for Bobby Labonte. Very nice looking car. You got uh, Kingsford here on the um, hood. I think this um, Toyota Camry looks absolutely stunning here. Uh, nice to see a small team. You got this kind of red going around, and then you got this white going around, and a full white side skirt. Very nice. You got Bush Beans, Scott's Lance. Um, even with JDG Doherty Racing back in the day, they still had a lot of. Uh, sponsors. That's kind of nice. You got the Bright 47 there. Really haven't changed the fault much. Back here you got lots of little sponsors. Uh, back here you got Glad. Um, gotta read the rest of these. Glad, Hidden Valley, and Masterpiece. On the deck lid there. And there is the other side. So, it's nice to see Lionel, even back in the day, kind of produce these smaller teams, and uh, this would kind of start the mass production of smaller teams like Go Fast Racing, like BK Racing, until they really fell under the radar. Um, like Michael Waltrip Racing, kind of. I do have a Michael Waltrip car that I want to review sometime. That car looks stunning. Uh, Phil Parsons Racing. Yeah, who remembers that? Phoenix Racing. Uh, Cody Ware Racing. Or, not Cody Ware Racing. Rick Ware, Rick, Rick Ware Racing, and uh, to name one more, Jermaine Racing. So, yeah, lots of small teams getting uh, mass production because of these guys. Oh, and Front Row is a big one. Forgot to mention that one. That one's a big one. You cannot miss that one. So, yeah, very nice. Very nice. But, isn't that all of them? Alrighty, guys, last car here. Oh, I didn't even show you guys the box. Jeez. This is David Reagan's number 34, honoring our hero's car. This is David Reagan, right? No, this is David Gilliland. Sorry, wrong person. 
I saw the 34 and I'm like, wait, that's not Travis Quattful. It's David Gill or David Reagan. Nope. Wrong again. Gosh dang it. I get mad at myself for forgetting these cars. I swear. Alrighty, guys. Here it is, anyways. The Honor Our Troops car for David Gilliland. Like I said, front row racing, man. Front row motorsports. There it is. So here you have an interesting design here. Not really sure what this is supposed to be on the front here. Man, I'm getting such a bad headache. I'm ready for bed. Um, not sure what that's supposed to be. I'm trying to read this right off the camera here. This says... Deffer, Still, Stiller, Tunnel to Towers Foundation, let us do good. Guessing that's a foundation. Interesting design here, you guys can see. Not sure what it's supposed to be of, but whatever. And then uh, you got a nice uh, flag here for America with, I think, New York City in the background, maybe. And then the same thing that was on the hood. I'm not going to pronounce that again because that was ridiculous to pronounce. And back here, uh, the same thing as the hood. Again, not going to read it because it's too hard and too long. You got a weird bluish thing going on here. Not sure what that is. And it also kind of spreads to the deck lid there. And there is the other side. Sorry this review is kind of crazy, but uh, this car was kind of hard to read, so... Yeah, other than that, no sponsor, really, for uh, Gilliland back in the day. Now the 34 car kind of runs in eh, mid-20s to mid-teens, late-teens, somewhere around there. But uh, definitely getting a lot of cars made, and now they're getting 124 cars. Or one more than 64, so yeah, I guess. Anyways, guys, this is going to be it. I'm actually going to put Labonte in front. Too. I'm trying to figure out the thumbnail. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, guys, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, I really should have used the white box for this because this is actually a much smaller. Holy cow. This is a way smaller review. Yeah, probably should have used that white box. That's okay. You guys know what I'm talking about, I think. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I don't know. Am I still talking? I think I'm still talking. Or am I not talking? Alrighty, guys. This is going to be it. I am going to leave some room here so I can fit the title of the video on the thumbnail. Alrighty, guys. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I should have the 2012s uh, out very soon. Probably tomorrow. Um, depending on what day this is, I honestly lost track of my update or my um, uploads today I just uh, today I'm gonna upload I believe the 2007 no 2008 diecast review um, that'll be coming out later but uh, and still until then guys stay tuned for more videos I'm not sure what I'm talking about anymore and uh, yeah oh let me ask you guys a question uh, p first of all please drop a comment down below and uh, let me know, which car do you have? Do you have any of these? Have you owned any of these? Have you banged up any of these? Let me know. I'm very interested to know, honestly, and I will reply as soon as you guys comment. If I get enough, if I get the notification, YouTube obviously screwed up, is very screwed up at the moment, and I have not been getting the notifications um, to tell me that you guys are commenting, so sometimes I have to go and actually go to creator studio and kind of look but uh, most of the time i do get the notification so comment down below do you have any of these um once again i'm very interested to know all right outro too long you guys are probably already clicking off this video anyways guys stay tuned for more videos and peace out